Hey friends, Carla here from Documenting the Journey. Clearly I'm already having camera issues. Um, I am going to hope to do a very quick flip through of the Wonderland 222. So I just did a system update on my YouTube and I can post the little linky thing up here, but I am basically in the Wonderland 222 for February and March. I was in the cousin. I already kind of a little bit miss the cousin, but the reason I left the cousin is because of the color. I didn't like the color change. I, however, the reason I miss it is because everything is just in one book and it's just super simple and it's super easy. But when the months change colors, I really like, I really just don't like it. And I forgot about that until I went from the orange January to the brown February. And like everything on that daily page is the color, including the grid and the text and everything, or I guess it's olive. I don't even know what color that is. Um, but anyways, I just realized that I never really did a full flip through of the layout and everything for the Wonderland. So the cousin has a, so this stuff I added separate. This does not come in the cousin, the basic, layout of the cousin is actually a let me get to it so you have all your monthlies in the front you have december of the previous year the entire calendar year monthlies in the very front all the way through march of the next year for pre-planning for that next year until you have your planner and so all of your months are in the front, and then that is followed by all of your weeks, which is followed by all of your days. With the Hobonichi Cousin, your weeks are a 24-hour format, so your day starts at 5 a.m. and it ends at, well, I guess your day starts, yeah, at 5 a.m. and it ends at like 4.59. So you have 24 hours here. You also have a calendar up here for that month with the week highlighted. And then you have this sidebar for all of your information you want to put there as well. The holidays for Japan are in red, Sundays are in red, and Saturdays are in dark gray unless some holiday falls on that. So you have your weekly spread and then you have your daily spreads, which are... A timeline here, basically these are one hour increments, whereas the weekly spread are half hour increments. And then you've got five check boxes up here, and then you have a bunch of grid blank space. Now, as you can see, I definitely had a, a groove going. Like I had everything that I wanted to track on a daily basis. I had my tasks, I had my gratitude and happy moments. I had everything for health, and then I had just random notes and stuff like that as well. And so I definitely found my groove throughout the entire month of January. But the one thing that really bugged me is when the color changed and then it changes every single month. This is the purple and then April was pink. And so it was just like every single month, the entire page would be that color. And I just, I just couldn't do it. Um, so right now I'm basically in a like internal battle war of do I deal with the color that I don't like or do I deal with having essentially this book and two separate books? So we're going to figure that out. That's why I'm going to try this for February and March. But other things that are in here are a bunch of like blank pages in, well, not a bunch, but I guess a couple of blank pages in the back. And then there was a bunch of Japan information like in Japanese that I couldn't utilize because I didn't know what it said, but there was a bunch of other like informational pages and I basically just cut out like printables and I kind of glued them in there. So I had my weekly cleaning tracker, my monthly cleaning task list, my book tracker and then I did my movies and my TV shows and then so these are basically what the informational pages look like if you don't cover them and then in the back there was also I kept some order trackers that I didn't glue in yet and then some more informational pages 
So the Hobonichi Cousin is a pretty minimal book, but it has everything in one book. Your monthlies, your weeklies, and your dailies. And it's all in like this convenient little sized A5 package. So because of the color, I decided to go to Wonderland. I had actually had these books on my shelf since October of 2021 when I pre-ordered. These are the B6 size. They also make these exact same planners in A5 in addition to A6. The timelines are a little bit different though. So with your weekly layout, this timeline for the B6 is 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., I guess 10 p.m. The A5, I can't remember the timelines, but the A6 was like 7 to 5. Like it was really, really short. So the first thing I kind of wanted to touch on is the website with Wonderland says that it's the Tomoe River paper, which I don't doubt that. I absolutely believe that. But it also said that it was white. So I think my definition of white is slightly different because this paper is the exact same color as the Hobonichi Cousin pages. And I feel like these are both cream. I also know that these are not white or maybe I'm thinking of bright white, but this is a white piece of paper. And so you can see the color differences. So I was a little bit bummed about that because honestly, I was really hoping for white pages, like what my brain would think of as white pages. But I feel like these are still very cream. And you can also see the very beginning of their book has this white type of cardstock. And then you can see the difference in color here, the white cardstock and then what I believe is very cream paper. So I was very saddened when I opened these up from the Saran Wrap. I was really looking forward to actual white pages, but these are not, in my opinion, white pages. However, I feel like they're not as yellow as the Weeks. I feel like the Hobonichi Weeks is more of a yellow tinge than the Cousin, and so, I'm trying to get this all in natural light to see if I can stack some notebooks on top. Okay, so you've got your Tomoe River of your Wonderland 222, the Tomoe River of the Hobonichi Weeks, and then the Tomoe River paper of the Cousin. In my opinion, these two are exactly the same, and this one is a lot more yellow. So the color of the page honestly is not that big of a deal, but Admittedly, I was a little disappointed that it was not what I envision as white paper. Um, okay, so the actual planner. So I ordered the B6. The daily notebook is separate from the actual planner itself. I'll go ahead and just take these real quick out of my cover. Okay, and so in order to have all of the information you need in the cousin, you need two books from Wonderland. And so as far as thickness goes, this is your cousin and these are the two books from Wonderland. However, with the planner, you do have these pages start in November. So you have November and December. So there's a whole extra month in here that is not in the cousin. So as far as the actual planner pages, the reason I decided to go with this is because it had all of the trackers included in it, basically that I was using in the Cousin anyway. So you have a key here and then an index. What I'm going to be doing is in my daily is I'm basically using bullet journal keys and I'm gonna write that in here in addition to in the actual daily notebook. And then index would be anything that I feel like is pertinent information that I need to access quickly. Like if my kids got sick or if somebody went to the hospital, I have a cat that is now essentially in hospice care so I can track her symptoms and the days that she gets her injections and her weight updates and stuff like that. So there's this page in addition to two other pages for index, which I actually really, really like. And then you have your four year calendar overview, 2021 to 2024. And then you have your yearly, which is extremely similar to the cousin. 
hang on I gotta get to it okay so this is like the yearly that you have in the cousin which is very similar to this yearly that you have in the wonderland and then you've got your extra space down here this is one thing that I actually really like about the Wonderland that the cousin did not have is a more detailed kind of overview of each month. So you have this here, which you could use as a tracker. You could use as like tracking birthdays or you can do a bunch of different. I've seen people do finance tracking. I've seen people do weight. I've seen people do activity steps. Um, minutes and hours outdoors, all kinds of stuff. And that same tracker is at the very beginning of the Hobonichi weeks as well. And so I haven't figured out what I'm gonna utilize that for yet. But the one that I actually like the best is these pages here. These are all 12 months broken up by quarters. And it's the month here and then an extra space here. So I got this and started it in February. So I basically chose not to backtrack here, but I have everything highlighted for the times that we are going to be not working or the kids are out of school. And then I've got big items that I need to do here as well for each month. So this is my month of March list. We've got our trips here. We've got the days that we're not gonna be doing school. And I have that for the entire calendar year. Now this is extremely handy for me because I do take off of work every time my kids have out of school. So if my employer is wanting a schedule, I give them a schedule once every quarter, I can easily open this and just email these exact dates without having to go through every single month in the planner to see these dates. And so I love this particular overview because it's extremely handy for me with my job. And so you've got all of those. And then these are the trackers that I essentially glued in the, I did the tip-ins of the beginning of my Hobonichi cousin. So these are A5 trackers that I printed off of a Etsy website, but it's all right here too, which I love because I have become obsessed with tracking. So again, I got this in February. I decided not to backtrack on January. And so I'm doing all of my tracking here. You have one for every month of the year. It actually does start in November because that's when the planner starts as well. So you've got all of these trackers at the very beginning. Let's see if I can get through it. And then another thing that I really like is you get an overview of the month. And so you can put anything here that you want, like bills that you've got coming up, trips that you've got coming up, goals that you want to do, anything like that. And then your monthly pages. Oh, also on this, let me just show you. So for example, January, so this is a December review. And so you have your monthly review that you can do any sort of reflection on that particular month. And then on the opposite page, you have the overview of the coming month. So these are what your monthly layouts look like. It has all of the holidays in it, which is another thing that I like because this is a Japanese planner. I had to actually write in all of the holidays. Like here is our Independence Day. And all of that stuff is already pre-written in on the Wonderland 222. I don't ever really care for these, mainly because I don't ever utilize these. I feel like, in my opinion, for me, the way I utilize my planner, this is waste, wasted space. But you can still have plenty of space here to write everything that you need to do that month or bill tracking, whatever you use your sidebar for. It also has the moon cycles in it as well. And again, the biggest reason that I chose this is because of the color. And so look at this monthly view in the A5 Cousin with the red versus this one. Oh, I guess I should do apples to apples. Hang on, let's go to January. Let's go to January in here, and then we'll just go to January in here. Okay. So here is the January with all of this red that you've got this was apparently some sort of holiday. I'm not even sure what's going on with that because I can't read a lot of the stuff in this planner. Um, 
but there was just, there was a lot of red. There was a lot of color and I just, I didn't really care for it versus this where everything is essentially grays and in my opinion, cream, not necessarily white. And so I just liked the neutrality and the lack of color in this planner more than I did the cousin. And so as far as the hourly weekly goes, the biggest downfall for me is there's two things is it's got stacked weekends which I'm hoping long-term is not gonna matter. And then it doesn't have a sidebar. And so on my weeklies in the cousin, So on my weeklies in the cousin, I utilized my sidebar quite a bit. So I actually did weekly to-dos that were not day specific. I did habit tracking, I did my kids' school schedule, and then I did my menu for the week. Because I didn't utilize the hourly part down here from midnight to 5 a.m., I actually did a recap of this week, like what I was watching, what I was listening to, happy meal that I got, what I was reading. And then I just don't have all of that space here in the weekly of the Wonderland. I'm really hoping because I've got a lot of space on my daily pages that that won't bother me. But basically you've got 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. You have these spaces down here that you could absolutely utilize for daily specific to-do lists. You've also got empty spaces, three rows up here. And then you have your stacked weekends, which are not hourly. So I'll show you how I have used it here. So I basically did all of my hourly stuff here. All right, so basically I've got all of my hourly timeline here, important things that I need to remember at the beginning. Like this was one of the days that I had to bring my cat to work so I could give her her injections. This is the day that I got paid. And then my bottom bar is what I was using for the same thing I was using in the cousin. So I've got my menu, I've got my kids school schedule, and then I kind of just rotated it and then I used it for a vertical weekly to-do list and then I rotated it again and then I did my weekly recap of everything that I was listening to, mail that I got, and things that I was reading as well. And so far it's actually worked pretty well with this format and that's basically just because I'm also using the daily. So if I wasn't using the daily I'd really struggle with trying to fit all of the information I need in a week on this page. Granted, I think the A5 would have more space, but you still would have stacked weekends and you still wouldn't have a sidebar. It would just be a bigger page. Um, so this is how I've been using my weekly. Now the difference is with this is the cousin has all your months in the front and then your weeks and then your days. Whereas this is more of a traditional type planner where you've got your month and then your weeks and then your month again and then your weeks and then your month again. And so again, you've got your review for the month prior, your overview for the month coming up, and then you go into your monthly view, and then you go into your weekly view here, and it just repeats throughout the entire planner. Now at the very end of the planner, you do actually get several daily pages. I was really hoping that I could break out all of my days and fit an entire year's worth of daily logging in addition to my weekly and monthly planning. But I was just shy about 20 pages in here because what I was going to do is do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I was just going to have a week of daily logging all on one page here. Unfortunately, it didn't give me enough daily pages in order to do that in this particular book. I think it could be a possibility if they took November out. And so if November came out, they could add enough daily pages to where you could do a full year's worth of daily rapid logging as well if you do that sort of bullet journal type thing. But you've got plenty of daily pages back here as well. You've got this hang on, come on, this much. So again, if you're doing a week on two pages, you're just shy about 20 to 25 pages, or I guess spread. 
So that is your basic walkthrough of the weekly. Now the daily notebook, again, it is separate. I'm gonna go to a blank day page here on this one. So the daily is undated. And oh, I also forgot to mention with these planners, all of your pages are numbered down at the bottom. And so at the beginning, when I was talking to you about the index, when I go back and I fill in the days that like kids were sick or, you know, I had to take off of work because school got canceled, something that wasn't pre-scheduled, I can put all of that in here and I can reference the, the page number, which is really nice. So this is a dated B6 planner. They have an undated as well. I do not have the undated, but I think the undated is all of the months in the front and then all of the weeks, but I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to go back and look on the website. Um, so your daily notebook is an undated notebook. I just got the B6, obviously, to match the size of this one. And there's 365 pages in here, so it is enough for an entire year. So as far as this one goes, you basically have your key again, and then your index here again, and then it'll go to a blank page. So your blank page is kind of sectioned out into three large areas. You've got this square up here, you've got this square here, and then you've got, well, I guess they're rectangles, and then you've got a large rectangle down here. So you can kind of see those slightly darker lines that makes the upside down T. The way I've been utilizing it is because they also do actually have a timeline here. It is a 24 hour format, just like in the weekly of The Cousin. But because I'm using the hourly pages here, I felt like for me, it would be over redundant for me to track my hourly progress here and track it in my daily. So the way I've actually utilized this is I have broken up my sections. Let me find one. I actually did some where I like used a pen and actually like separated those lines a little bit better. Okay, here. So I basically drew the upside down T. I've got all of my daily tasks on this side, my gratitude, my happy moments, like things that I want to remember on this side and then any other types of notes or journaling down on the bottom. And I've been pretty consistent with that exact layout because it's very similar to what I was actually using in The Cousin. And like I said, I had found my groove with The Cousin and I actually really loved my daily pages more than I loved my weekly pages. So I wanted to carry this over into my wonderland and so that's part of the reason that i've stuck with this is because it's working for me i really like it i feel like i've got a lot of information on this page i can come back and look at any of these daily pages and know exactly what was going on during that day how i felt during that day like down here i even wrote that i was awake at 4 30 because my dog got sick yes i have two sick animals and yes it is hard but I'm lucky to work at an emergency and specialty animal hospital. So I have access to amazing veterinary care. And so I can track all of that information down here as well. I can track what shows I'm watching with my husband or with my kids, stuff like that. And so your daily pages are all the exact same. There are also like little slash marks up here for your day, your I guess your month, your day, your year, or your day, your month, your year, whichever way you date your pages. I did also forget to mention it's the same in the planner, but you do get two strings. You get a gold and I guess like a really dark gray or silver. I'm not sure if it's silver or gray. I'm not sure. Um, but anyways, so this is kind of how I've been using this system and I've been keeping them together in my Aura Estelle cover. And so I'm essentially using the same stuff in the cousin that I am here, but it's just in two separate books. And so now is just kind of the test of whether I can handle two separate books or if I'm gonna cut the back cover off of this one and the front cover off of this one, glue the cardstock pages together and just use book tape and make this one book, or if I'm gonna deal with the color changes and go back to the cousin. I will be honest, for the daily pages, I like the B6 better. 
because it's smaller and I feel less obligated to fill out space. I'm actually learning to embrace the white space or cream space, I guess, on my pages. And so I'm learning how to embrace that. And so if there is a day where I don't fill it out too much, like this one, the weekends are really hard for me to keep up with my planner because it's a lot of just cleaning and family time stuff. Um, or I will just doodle in it. So I like the daily pages of the B6 better, but I actually like the size of the weekly pages of the cousin in the A5 better, mainly because I just miss having the sidebar instead of having to write all of that stuff on the bottom. And I like the longer hours as well. It's not really that I do anything after 8 p.m. when my kids go to bed, but I like being able to track what shows I was watching with my husband, if I was using my planner and playing in my pages, or if I was reading. I like being able to track that. And I also like being able to track when I woke up and when I went to bed as well. And so it's definitely an adjustment for me. And so that's part of the reason I decided to just dive in full force into this system is to see really which one I was happiest in. And so there's definitely give and take of each type of planner. And so, I don't know, we'll just have to see. I actually have on my list of things to do is to transfer all of the tracker information from my cousin to the Wonderland but I think I'm just gonna keep it in here and just fill it out in here as I go through my cleaning and tasks because I need to figure out like long-term which planner I'm gonna be in. And there's a very good chance that I'll kind of jump around in both because like I said, I like the daily pages in the smaller size better, but I like the weekly pages in the bigger <laughs> size better. Ugh, y'all. Why, is, why do I have to make it so hard? But anyways, so there's that. So definitely pros and cons of both systems. One book, two book. I mean, I think overall, if you don't use a ton of stickers, I think size and carrying is definitely a factor as well because like here is your B6. And so the A5 is significantly larger so if you're planning on carrying it around, that's something also to kind of keep in mind if you wanna carry two books versus one book, if you wanna carry two small books versus one slightly larger book. And then again, color. Do you mind color or do you not mind color? So I don't know, we'll just kind of see. So, I mean, those are basically my biggest pros and cons of each system. So just as a quick recap, I don't like the color. I love the no color. I like all the trackers are included. I like this size daily page, but I like this size weekly page. So yeah, we'll have to just play around and figure it out because I'm not really sure yet what I'm gonna do, but I am fully committing for all of February and all of March to this system here and I will not go into my cousin for all of February and all of March because I know that if I go into my cousin, I'll confuse myself. So I want to give this like a really good legitimate chance on whether I think it's gonna work for me. Honestly, overall, it's working relatively well. It's just the weekly pages that I'm struggling with. And that's just because it doesn't have a sidebar. I actually don't mind having a stacked weekends. I really thought that I would but I don't mind it as much as I thought that I would. And so the stacked weekends are not as much of an issue as the fact is I feel like I don't have any extra space for my sidebar. And even if I got the A5 Wonderland, I still wouldn't have that sidebar. And so it's not like I could just move up a size and stay in the color-free planner that I'm wanting. But again, with any planning system, you just have to figure out what is more important to you do I want the space in the sidebar and I'll deal with the color or am I going to keep the neutrality and just deal with the lack of space in sidebar? So we'll just kind of have to figure out what is most important to me. <laughs> and We'll just kind of play around with it and I'll keep you guys updated, of course. So for now, again, because I'm fully committing to this system, 
I am going to do a quick plan with me in this system. I'll end this video here and I'll just create a new video. So if you're interested in seeing me plan in my Wonderland, then I will be doing that in my next video. I'm also committing to not using any stickers in these planners. I didn't use any stickers in the Cousin and I actually did use a little bit of washi in here in the monthly just because visually it helps me not have these extra days in here. So that is like the only type of deco that I'm committing to right now is to just block off the empty days in my monthly. But I'm choosing not to use stickers because I don't really, I, I really just don't want to buy stickers this year. And I know that if I start using them, I'll fall in love with it. I'll think it's super cute. And honestly, I am more productive when I don't have a lot of deco to kind of sidetrack me. I'm not worried about making my pages pretty. I'm just worried about getting my plans written down, getting my tasks done. And so that's another reason I'm committing to not using stickers. So I'll end this video and then I'll do a no sticker pen only functional plan with me in my weekly and daily pages of my Wonderland. So if that's something that you're interested in seeing, make sure you subscribe and turn on the little notification so you'll get an alert every time I post a video because that video is coming up next. So again, thank you for watching and hanging out with me. I hope that this wasn't too confusing for you guys and I hope you were able to see, with the exception of the size difference, I hope you were able to see the differences between these two planners and honestly there were quite a few similarities as well. So if you have any questions or you want me to show you anything again more specific, feel free to DM me over on Instagram or just pop a question down here at the bottom and I'll see if I can explain it. But if you wanted other video walkthroughs, I can just do those in my DM on Instagram. So feel free to find me over there as well. Again, thank you for hanging out with me and I hope this video was helpful and I'm curious as to know if you prefer the cousin or if you prefer the wonderland. So let me know down below which one you prefer. Thank you and have a good one.